video. This room is really strange right now because it is practically empty. When we got back here, we had our six pythons that basically stay here permanently and we're almost back down to the same six snakes. So that is an indicator that we are getting ready to leave and we have basically cleared out and sold all of the surplus. All these racks are powered down, um, basically empty. I think I have one box to ship next week on Monday and that's it, we're done. So for those of you that watched last week's video on our export to Malaysia, uh, just to follow up on that, the two boxes made it just fine. The animals arrived in good order and everybody is happy. I'm also happy. And I was able to access our camera feed through my phone app and I captured this screenshot of one of the two boxes that were being packed right here in the snake room that you guys saw on our video. One of those boxes is actually uh, in this image sitting in the middle of our facility and the box has been emptied. It's obviously a night shot, but um, that box is empty. Those animals put away and it's just kind of a trip for me to see the same box that was sitting here is now on the other side of the planet in our breeding facility. So I think that's kind of cool. And just a little bit of a teaser uh, of our facility. We're going to show you that as soon as we can gain access into Malaysia. So hopefully soon, maybe January, February, fingers crossed, uh, we'll be able to get a bunch of footage for you guys of our facility. So that being said, we are leaving in one week. We are headed back to Thailand a week from today. So we're prepared. Uh, packing is quite interesting because we don't have to really bring a lot of personal items. We're just bringing stuff that we need. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool, but we're way ahead of the game and not really stressed out about that. So. Today we are going to talk about Papuan water pythons. It is something that is basically kind of the same scenario as the Papuan spotted python. The water pythons occur in Australia and they also occur in Papua New Guinea. Now, I don't know if those animals are warranted as qualifying for a different subspecies or even another species. Uh, I'm hoping that at some point somebody takes the reins and does some study on that because I don't know if they would qualify or not. My personal feeling is, is probably in the DNA, it's probably going to show some separation. I don't know what you guys think about that. Put in the comments below what you think. Um, they look the same, so the paint job is the same, but they've been separated the same amount of time as the Papuan spotted python, so who knows? Uh, that remains to be seen. So the first time I became aware of that animal was on the farm in Indonesia. Uh, we went there obviously to do our buying and making videos for you guys as well. And I'm gonna cut to an old clip that we made on the farm of me showing one of the wild caught uh, water pythons from Papua. So here's a water python. These are here from Indonesia. Obviously the fuscus, fuscus do occur in Australia, but they also do occur here in Indonesia. And this is proof to it right here. We do have a quota on these guys and uh, I might actually bring some of these in. These are really cool. These guys eat like crazy and they breed really well. They breed actually kind of at a, at a young age. They grow real fast. So kind of a, nice, a really interesting snake that I haven't seen in quite some time. But um, again, possible for the next shipment. I have a trio here. I have a male that was uh, U.S. captive bred unrelated to two sibling females, two sisters that I imported uh, from Indonesia and I have the CITES paperwork. So nice unrelated trio. They are not breedable yet, but uh, they eat like crazy. They are growing like crazy and uh, they'll be there before too long. So it's a really beautiful snake. I wanna show you guys back here basically how we keep them. I use the CB80 tubs for these guys and this is basically how we keep them these are the two the two females so in the boxes here we like to use substrate and we have like a synthetic wood hide and then uh, I have some grapevine branches there and a big water bowl and this snake is looking for food 
So the feeding response on these guys is pretty incredible. So not a gigantic snake. These guys get about six or seven feet. These are about halfway there. When they're babies, their bellies are yellow, like solid yellow. And now these animals, they're getting like a little bit of pigment on their belly, but it's still yellow. And kind of interesting that the from the vent to the tip of the tail is dark. It's totally different than the rest of the belly. Now these animals have a really nice iridescence in the sun. I'll take you guys out and let you see that. It's pretty impressive. So you can see the iridescence is very, very pronounced. Really, really pretty. And these guys are not picky eaters at all. I feed them anything from frozen thawed chicks and quail, and then of course rats and mice. Frozen thawed is act is no problem whatsoever. These guys don't care. So they're almost there. Probably eh, not next year, I don't think, but the year after for sure. So when those animals get full size, because we're not really maintaining any animals here in the US, I'll be moving them into the animal plastics cages at some point and that will be a very nice forever home for those guys. And then we have the Antaresia papuensis, the Papuan spotted pythons trio. And, uh, and then that's it. That's like, that's everything that resides here. And while we're gone, our family will be taking care of those animals as they did for the last, uh, eight eight month jaunt that we were overseas in Thailand so it's absolutely no problem and then what I like to do is I like to keep brand new clean tubs for them ready to go and then when those animals need a uh, fresh tub fresh substrate and all that it's already there and it's just a matter of putting a clean water bowl and then moving the animals to like the row for example above and then it's done and then my family doesn't have to like go crazy <laughs> And then all those animals are feeding on frozen thawed, so my freezer is full with enough uh, rodents and chicks and all that stuff for those animals to be just fine while we're gone. So just something very interesting that I haven't highlighted before on the channel. Hopefully one day I'm able to see those in the wild in Papua. Uh, fingers crossed, waiting for borders to open. We're eager to get back and do some field herping and check out all that stuff. So. We will be sure and bring you guys along with us, of course, if we go back. And that is about it for today's video, you guys. I just wanted to highlight one last thing that I have not highlighted here in my little tiny collection. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves and thank you so much for watching. See you guys. Bye.